If I could perform live with anyone, oh, I think it would be, I'm torn between Billy Joel at his, like, forever residence at Madison Square Garden, if I could ride in the helicopter with him to and from, um, or Carol King. I grew up uh, on a farm outside a little town called Canandra, which has a population of 1,800 people, I think. And my mum is a piano teacher and she was always playing the piano at home and I sort of started playing the piano at kind of age three or four. You know, the Beatles, Billy Joel, Carole King, Eva Cassidy, Joni Mitchell, that was kind of the music that I was listening to. And then I think there's always a point in your life where your own tastes take over from just the music that your parents have had. And for me, that was Missy Higgins' The Sound of White, which came out in 2004 and I was in year six. I was 12 years old and I was just about to go away to boarding school in Sydney and my birthday's at the very end of the year. And my parents gave me that CD and my first guitar um, and I went off to boarding school and learnt every song from the record. It was the first time I'd sort of heard music that confessional and that has really stayed with me and, and informed the way I write music. Heaven, I know that we tried. Heaven, I know, heaven, I know. When I left school, I started studying medicine and I was always writing music. I didn't think I would necessarily do anything with it. It's just sort of something that felt as normal as breathing, you know, it's just sort of was part of my life. And I was sort of going through uni and I just really was craving performing, I was playing some covers and then sort of slowly started to slip my own songs in and, um, and medicine was kind of running in parallel to that. And most of the time it was me lying, <laughs> not turning up for class. And, you know, it, when I'm catching a flight back from Perth because I'd played a show there the night before, trying to make rounds in the morning or whatever, it was, um, it was a pretty tricky balancing act. But then after that, I sort of, you know, could, I took a year to just work out what I wanted to do. And I wrote Our Two Skins. And then I, I went and did my internship at Prince of Wales Hospital, took a year completely off music. Um, and I really enjoyed it, but you know, I need to perform and I need to write music to, to really be happy. And so that's kind of what I'm focusing on at the moment, but the pandemic threw a bit of a wrench in there because as I was gearing up to focus back on music wholly, the industry shut down. And I was fortunate in that I did have this background in medicine and I spent the last two years in and out of uh, different hospitals and filling in. They just feel like these two sort of forces that pull at me at various points. And I just kind of try to go with the one that has the most pull. And um, for the moment, I'm very happy to say that that is music. <laughs> Looking back at debuting Our Two Skins at the Opera House in 2020, obviously because of the pandemic, Vivid couldn't go ahead. And so the Opera House very kindly invited me to be part of this digital series where we played a, a, a full scale show, uh, but nobody was in the audience. I did think the first time I'd be here, there would be a few more people in the crowd, um, but I'm imagining you all like an NRL matches cardboard cutouts yeah it was it was a really bizarre experience i had all the same nerves that i have when i'm playing to real people because i think you imagine this digital audience the internet but coming back two years later to play to a room full of people and that exchange of electricity that you get between the performer and the audience there's just nothing quite like it so i'm so happy to be able to come back As I was writing the songs for that record, I sort of had this voice in the back of my head being like, how are you going to actually tell this story, you know? And I sort of wrestled with that for 
a while thinking how upfront I wanted to be about, you know, all these questions of identity and love and, you know, in the, with the background of Australia voting on same-sex marriage. And, and I just decided in the end to be like completely honest. And when I made that decision, there were a few weeks where I was like, oh man, this is going to really take on a life of its own. And that scared me. But I'm really pleased that I did that. And now two years on, it's not as raw, but it's almost more meaningful. We made the record on my family farm where my grandmother lived. And I wrote this song about her. Um, she helped raise me and she passed away just before I made the record. And I'm gonna think about her and play sandwiches. Thank you. You'd be on the phone every The album has had time to fill people's ears and brains and chests and, you know, mean something to them. And so I knew getting up on stage, playing different songs from that record, it, it feels really special to sort of make ties from the songs to those stories now, not just my own. Vivid has been a bucket list for me ever since the festival was created. I think it's always been really, you know, visionary and, and uh, I feel really stoked to be included in that. As a result, I spent a lot of time creating a special show for Vivid and that's both in the visual direction, creative direction from Versus and, you know, from the sound perspective, a lot of the music that I've been making um, is so informed by textures and sounds from different places. Like I made my last record in, on my family farm and my family have lived on the farm for about 120 years. Um, so it's sort of filled with, you know, rich history. And I just sort of wanted to get all of those aspects and kind of make the sound more holistically. So why don't we experiment with some different microphones that you might not normally use in a live show and then I also thought that kind of looping different sounds and making sonic beds that I could play the music over the top of was really key to the show. So I have kind of three or four, five maybe, different things on stage that can loop sounds. All in all, it's, it's a lot of pushing buttons and a lot of kind of trying to remember, where do I go next, where do I go next? But I, I never want anything to kind of overshadow the song. So it's just all about couching the songs in really as much beauty as possible. When I was planning the show for 2022 Vivid, two years in the making, I sort of like saw it as an opportunity to kind of look back on my whole career, really. My first song that got any radio play in Australia was a song called Nothing's As It Seems. I think it was like November in 2014 and Richard Kingsmill on Triple J gave it its first spin. Tell us stories of our wildest dreams. Slowly but surely that really changed my, my life and made music into a career. And so I wanted to play that song and similarly another song called Can We Work It Out. So I sort of, after opening the show with Aeroplane Bathroom, which is the first song from Our Two Skins, I kind of go into, I guess, my back catalogue. I don't feel like I've been playing music long enough to have a back catalogue, but I suppose that's what it is. I also just put out a new song called Way I Go and I wanted to include that in the set as well. So yeah, instead of being an album launch, this, this Vivid show almost feels like, you know, a bit of a, a bookend for what's happened and kind of the first step in, in what's coming. You know, I, I feel even though the, the pandemic has been a really challenging time, I do feel very lucky in that, you know, the, the record I put out still seemed to sort of reach people and all I really want to do is write and play shows and uh, for the moment, I'm just going to sort of dive headfirst into that. You're the way. 